Let's take a look at the R lab for the rate regression and lasso. Um, so fortunately, we have a package have both functions for um, rate regression and lasso. And it's in this package called GLM net. And make sure you first install the package before you load um, the library, okay? Um, if this is the first time you use this, um, this library, this package. Um, so yeah, let's, let's uh, take a look at the rate regression first. Um, well, for in the GLM net, we will need, um, no matter you want to do rate regression or less so, you would have to um, specify uh, X matrix, which is the covariate, and a Y matrix that is for your response. Um, so it's a, a slightly different um, format comparing to the packages that we used before. Um, let's um, again take a look at of the data, um, haters data from the book uh, ISLR. And we will um, make our X matrix. So use this model dot matrix function. Um, so this is how you get the uh, covariate um, matrix for, for the function that we are going to use. So I have this minus one here, which is just remove the column of one. So we remember the original um, covariate mm -hmm. matrix would have a column of all ones, which is corresponding to the intercept. But when we do the, um, for, for the ridge regression and lasso, we only um, like shrink those uh, coefficients for uh, the actual covariate. So not including the intercept. Um, so we will need this X uh, matrix without the column of one corresponding to intercept. And we have this, basically it's a vector uh, response, Y, which is the salary variable. Um, and I made a note here, this model dot matrix, it, it's super helpful because it will uh, help us converting those category variables into the proper dummy variables. Like if it's yes or no, it will convert it to binary like zero, one or one zero. Um, so it, um, it's kind of processing your, your data automatically for you. Um, okay, so this is the model dot matrix to get your X matrix. Um, oh, there is a argument alpha in the GLM net function. So this GLM net is the function that we are going to use to do rate regression and lasso. So if you specify this alpha being zero, it's, uh, it's telling this function to do a rate regression. But if you specify alpha equal to one, it will do a lasso instead. Okay, so this is clear. And uh, yeah, let's try to uh, fit in um, with this function and uh, remember, we have this tuning parameter lambda when we do, so no matter in rate regression or lasso, um, so this GLM net, it will um, search over a grade uh, or a, a selected range of lambda values. And, but you can actually set your own grade of X values of lambda values, sorry. I mean to say lambda values. So here, Example, I made a grade, um, which is basically a sequence of data for, for, the, um, like for the candidate value for lambda. So we can then do this GIM net function, specifying the X, X matrix Y and telling, telling it to do a rate regression and um, ask it to search over the grade that you just provided here. Okay, um, so this GLM net will just do will just do all the fitting for different value of lambda, and uh, um, yeah, from the least square feet to the null model, um, 
which have all the coefficients. And uh, oh, yeah, to the null model, um, mm, well, did I make it wrong? Uh, from the least square feet to the null model, yeah, it, it basically from with no covariate to um, uh, yeah, to the point that all the variable would be in it and to select your lambda values. To select, yeah, to select your lambda value. Um, so, well, well, I didn't mention anything about standardizing your variable as much as like when we do that in the slides, because this GOM net function has already done it for you by default. But if you do not, want to do the standardization well actually you should do that but just in case you do not want to do the standardization you can just turn this off by saying standardize equal to false um, just put this argument into the function it will just not do the standardization um, okay but if you are if you are um, doing your regression like uh, tuning your lambda parameter on your own you would have to do the standardization on your own. Um, but this, this nice function just did it for you. Um, let's take a look at all the output from this uh, GLM net we just ran. We call it rage.model, okay? Um, so if we take a look at the coefficients of this model, and it's, it's of a dimension of 20, by a hundred, it's 20. Uh, so this 20 is because we have 19 predictors and an intercept. So, um, so that's why there are 20 rows. So each row will correspond to um, like the coefficients for that, um, um, for, for that covariate. And uh, 100, why is 100? Because here our grade is of length 100. So basically um, this range dot model, its coefficients would have like for all 100 different values of lambda, you would have all the estimated covariates. Um, okay, so that's why you got a 20 by 100 matrix of estimated covariates. Um, and uh, we mentioned, if we have a large value of lambda, um, the coefficient would just shrink towards zero, right? Should be very small, very close to zero. And if we use a small lambda, um, then um, those coefficients would be, would be larger. Okay, let's take a look. If we, um, let's say we pick the fifth, we have 100. Uh, candidate value for lambda, right? If we pick the one, like the fifth lambda, uh, oh, sorry, this is the 50th uh, lambda, which is lambda equal to 11498. Um, so let's take a look what the coefficients looks like. So let's just, just take the column 50 um, to take a look at all the estimated coefficients. Okay, including the intercept. Um, so let's uh, also calculate the L2 norm. Um, so which is 6.4, uh, almost 6.4. And, and let's compare this whole thing with a smaller lambda. So, so lambda is smaller. Um, so this is lambda being 705. Um, and the coefficients are actually larger than when lambda is big, right? Um, because a big lambda would shrink, would lead your estimate towards zero. So those would correspond to a smaller, um, smaller coefficients. And this one, they are all slightly larger than this one. And it, if we take a look at all of it, uh, L2 norm, it's much bigger comparing to that one, right? This L2 norm, remember, is measuring how close our coefficients are close, uh, yeah, how close our coefficients to zero. 
So this one is further away from zero comparing to that one when we have a bigger lambda. Okay. Um, well, if you want to try some new values of lambda, um, see previously we tried a hundred different value of lambda, but you want to try something new. Um, you can do this predict with this ridge dot model and specify this, um, yeah, this S being 50 and uh, yeah, S being 50, that's your new value of lambda and the type you specify, you want to get the coefficients. Um, and I put this one to 20 here just to kind of make it the same format as this one, just for easier comparison um, from, from this one. But if you do not have this, um, this uh, bracket here, it will just give you a, um, a vector or a column vector. Um, Okay, so this is this is when you have a new value of lambda. How do you get your the corresponding coefficients? Um, okay, um, this is how do you use this um, GLM net function? And let's do a, um, well a actual uh, modeling with testing and training data set, um, and we want to. Um, we want to uh, get a good model, good model by comparing the um, testing mean square error. Um, okay, let's first split the data. <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> let's firstly um, split the data into training and, and uh, testing. So we, we're going to do a, a basically a slightly um, different way of the splitting. We will sample um, from one to n, where n you can get it by this n row of this x, which will give you the number of rows of your data. So we would get one half of the data um, as our training. So this is the indices for training. And oops, and this this is the indices for testing data. So we specify y dot test. That's for our testing data set. Um, and let's do a range regression uh, on the training data set and evaluate the mean square error on the testing set. And for now, let's just choose. Let's just randomly pick a lambda value being four. And let's see how we're going to do that. So we'll first do this GLM net function with, um, with our training data specified, like we only pick those values corresponding to the training indices. And um, also for, for, for Y, we got our training um, values or Y. And we are doing ridge regression. So R4 equal to zero. And um, lambda, uh, well, we'll still use lambda being the grade that we specified previously. Um, yeah, this is a threshold to like, to like further constrain like how much you go with this uh, read regression. And if we want to try use lambda equal to four and use uh, to do that, our testing data set. So we will do predict with this range dot model, which from here, and specify new lambda being four. And the new x is our testing set. So all the testing uh, covariates in uh, the covariates in our testing sets. And let's take a look what the mean square error is. So this is how you calculate the mean squared error. Um, so you know this reach uh, dot pre pre predict would be the value um, like predicted um, with, with this lambda value. Um, and you compare it with the true testing um, values for y. And you take their 
um, uh, squared difference and you take the mean, that's your mean squared error on the testing data set. Um, okay, well, there is, uh, there is a confusion that I'm not sure why this is a different value than the one on the book, but it can be like a change in the data, but this is actually how you calculate the mean squared error. Um, and if you do um, the non model, just to get the mean square error for the non model, um, which would be the non model is that you have no covariance at all, where your predicted value would just be the mean of your data. So this is the mean of the data, the training data. Um, so that would be the predicted value for your testing, because this is the model with no covariance at all. So when you do prediction, it will always predict the one um, as the, um, the mean of the data that you train the model. So this is the mean squared error for the non-model, which is way bigger than the one that we, um, we did a model on it, right? We include at least some of our uh, covariates there. This one have no covariates. It's not as good a model by looking at the mean square error because it has a larger error. Um, so, so, this, so when we have this non-model, it's corresponding to the one we're fitting a very large value of lambda. So let's do that um, with a big enough lambda e to the power of O. So that's like, yeah. So this is, this is the super large lambda value already, right? Um, so we calculate the corresponding means with this null model, right? This is just to verify. Um, this two model are equivalent. Either the null model or use a super large value of lambda, you will get almost no, um, like almost like zero value for the coefficients. Okay, um, so if we do um, use lambda equal to zero, let's see, and you will get the same mean square error as the least square. Okay, so let's take a look. So this is how you do that. You just, just specify this lambda being zero by here, and uh, you're doing um, on the new, uh, Sorry, the new X will, will be your uh, testing data set because you want to get the predicted value on testing data set, right? Um, and this is how you get your mean squared error. And if we compare that with um, the least square model, you will see, um, so this is how we do the least square model, remember, right? Um, and, whoops. Oh, well, I didn't, why, why I didn't calculate, <laughs> why I didn't calculate the mean square error, but I just um, compared the coefficients. Um, well, they are really close, okay. Um, but yeah, I, I'm supposed to calculate the mean square error as well, just to make sure, actually they are, they are equal because like when lambda equals zero, you have all the coefficients there. Um, so it's, it's just the same as you doing um, the least square model, this linear model, we're all familiarized. Um, okay. Yeah, just by looking at their uh, corresponding estimated coefficients, they are super close, right? Okay. Uh, let's see, how do we choose our lambda? Well, let me see if the, yeah, the plots I have loaded here. Okay, um, so, well, previously we just, we just used a, a random number, like we just picked um, a number, lambda being four, um, which is not a good idea. Um, to fit your model, what we will do is to use the cross validation to tune the parameter. So you choose the best lambda, give, which give you the best model. And 
Fortunately, we have this cv.glmnet function to do the, the k-fold cross-validation for you. Well, this is easy, right? You do not need to like do it on your own. Um, so by default, it will do a 10-fold cross-validation, but you can always change um, like the number of folds. So it can do k folds, no matter what k you would choose. Um, well, a good practice would be you set your seed when you do this cross validation so that the result can be repeated. It's reproducible. So when others run the same data set, run the same um, code, it will give them the same output. Okay, it's tractable then. Um, so this is how you do this cv.glm net. You just specify the training data for X and Y and alpha being zero, that's doing a rate regression, right? Um, and a plot function is, uh, is supplied to plot this um, mean squared error versus the log of your lambda value. Well, this is equivalent to, to, to do um, like lambda on lambda by itself on the x axis, but this is just a better scaling. So it use log lambda. Um, um, well, yeah. So, so you can just do plot the plot of this uh, cv dot ot. Well, we want to get the one. We want to get the lambda, which give us the lowest mean squared error. So, well, this dashed line is telling us this is the best lambda we should choose, the best log lambda, okay, uh, from this plot. And you can actually extract this lambda. So use this uh, dollar sign lambda dot mean. So, well, this best lambda is the actual lambda but if you want to do the log of this best lambda which is here roughly 5.8 so corresponding in this plot okay and you can also choose you can also choose the um, use the one standard error rule that we mentioned in the slides so um, and you can easily get that by just use this dollar sign, lambda dot one SE. So one SE, one standard error. Well, um, this standard error is actually the standard error for the, for the mean squared error. Um, so, so inside the algorithm, it will first estimate the, the mean squared error, and then it will choose this lambda when it's when the mean square error goes one standard error up. Okay, so that way we, we get a larger lambda. Um, so here, when we use the one standard error rule, the lambda would be uh, a log lambda, would be 8.8 .8 roughly. So it's a bigger lambda and it will, it will give us uh, um, um, a sparse, uh, like, I should say, comparing to the, the one with lambda, with log lambda being 5.8, it will give us a smaller model, okay? Less coefficients would be, um, will be selected into the model, okay? Um, and you can find the test mean squared error for the minimum lambda value by doing this uh, predict, and then you, do, you get this uh, mean squared error just as we did before. Well, this value is lower than the one we just used lambda being four. So, which is not surprising at all because this is our best lambda. Um, but more importantly, this is a better model than the mean square error for, for the least square when you have all the coefficients. Or like I should say for ridge regression, you have, um, um, you have, uh, all the coefficients being non-zero, but some of them are, are much larger than others, okay? Because ridge regression would not set exactly zero to the covariates, 
uh, to the yeah exactly zero to the co coefficients of the uh, of the model. Okay, and as always, once you choose the ideal tuning parameter, so it's a two step thing. So you first choose your tuning parameter, and then you should refit your model um, with the uh, with the data that you have. Okay. Um, so you can do this GLM net with your X and Y doing range regression. And um, you do the prediction um, with this odd, this, this GLM. Um, and the type you specify, is, it will give you um, the estimated coefficients with the best lambda. And um, this would be your um, your model, what the coefficients looks like. Um, or you can tell some of them have really large coefficients and some of them are uh, got shrunk um, clo very close to zero. Um, yeah, so yeah, because it's real regression, nothing, none of the variable coefficients will be zero. But we get a sense some of the variables are more important than others, those with uh, much lower coefficients. Okay. Um, let's see. How do we do this with lasso? Um, so lasso is now with the same function, but specifying alpha equal to one. Okay. Um, and uh, well, this is not surprising here. You can do the same thing, just change this alpha value. And when you do the plot, you can see it's slightly different, right? It's plotting, um, it's plotting the coefficients on the y-axis and on the x-axis is the L1 norm. So as this L1 norm goes up, that means um, the, um, like the coefficients, your SNA coefficients are getting further away from zero, okay? It's, it's slightly like the operate direction comparing to lambda because when lambda goes up, um, coefficients um, get penalized, get a shrink to zero. So the L1 norm would be smaller, okay? So comparing to the previous um, quad versus the log lambda, so this is like the opposite direction. Um, this plot is coefficient plot. So showing how the values of, um, of coefficients change as the L1 norm change. So um, you can do the cross validation again with this cv.glm net, just tell it to do a lasso. Um, and you can again plot the, uh, make a mean square error plot versus this, oh, uh, yeah, versus this log of lambda. Okay, so this is um, pick your, your best lambda. This is, will be your first step. So this dashed line is giving you the best log lambda. Well, this dashed line is actually giving you the, the lambda using, using one standard error rule, okay? So, um, similarly, how do we get the best lambda? And we calculated the, co the mean squared error correspondingly uh, for the testing data set, okay? Um, so this, this value is definitely lower than the null model um, and the least square model that we, we, we tested before. Um, but it's, it's slightly, I think it's slightly higher than the mean squared error, but it's comparable to the mean square error of the ridge regression. But, um, well, this is where the lasso would shine. The result coefficients, um, they are, some of them are exactly zero, okay? Just look at um, the, the final uh, estimated coefficients. Many of them are set to zero. We only picked um, those important covariates. Uh, yeah, covariates, select those variable into your model, um, which is 11 of them out of this 19 coefficients, okay? 
Um, and you can also do the lasso coefficient and select those not equal to zero. So this would be our final model. These are the coefficients you are going to include and those are their, um, uh, oh, these are the covariates that you are going to include in your model. And those values are the corresponding um, coefficients estimated. Okay, this concludes our lab with um, ridge regression and lasso. Hopefully you now you know how, how to do that in R. How do you fit the model, split your model to, oh, sorry, split your data into training and testing, get your best lambda, and once you get the lambda you choose, um, you can do the final model. Either do a ridge regression or a lasso. Um, do a lasso, use your, uh, yeah. Um, do a variable selection, use a lasso. But ridge regression is helpful as well, but it just do not give you exactly zero for those coefficients. Um, um, yeah, make your decision. And we, we talked about when are you going to use rage, when are you going to use lasso? Uh, and now you know how to how to do that in R. Okay, um, that concludes our uh, this short video. Okay.